episode of Muscle Meals with Steve. Today we're going to be grilling. It's cold out in most parts of the country, so grilling's not an option. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the grill in the house. Not literally. We're just going to use our stove to make filet mignon with a cabernet sauce. And then we're going to finish cooking the steak inside of a 375 degree oven. I've made this a zillion times and it really is one of the best ways to eat steak. Side dishes today, we're going to make uh, smashed potatoes and we're going to make pearl onions with uh, raisins and pine nuts. It's really an incredible side dish. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is just spray a saute pan or a frying pan with a little bit of olive oil. I use one of the sprayers. And we're going to add a very small, just a pat of butter. The butter will help the steak really brown. And we're going to heat our oven to 375 degrees. We like the pan to be 375 degrees. If you don't have one of those, which most people probably won't, when you add the butter to the pan, it'll start to foam up. And when you stop hearing it make noise, you know the pan is ready to go. And you can feel the heat. But 375 is great. I'm going to go grab my steaks out of the fridge, put a little salt and pepper on them, and then we'll pop them in the fry pan. Okay, so I have my fillets, and I've added some salt and pepper to side number one. Our pan was about 375 degrees. And these steaks are about two inches. These fillets are two inches tall. Um, so I like to eat my steak very rare. And what we'll do is all we're going to do is cook the outside really quickly at a high heat and that will seal in all the flavor and juice. I'm going to saute them for about two to three minutes on each side, flip it over, and then we're going to pop them in a 375 degree oven. Depending on how you like to eat your meat, that's how you will, how long you'll cook it in the oven. So I'm going to cook them for about 10 minutes because I like my meat very rich. Cook my steaks on side number one. Now I've turned them over. You need to move them around a little in the pan so they don't attach to the pan. If you move them, it'll let the air get underneath them and cook them evenly. Otherwise, it'll kind of create like an air bubble between the pan and the steak and it won't cook properly. While our steak cooks in the oven, I'm going to work on the potatoes. I've taken regular Idaho potatoes and cut them into quartered them, and I place them into hot boiling water, and we'll let them simmer and cook until they become soft, and then we'll mash them and add some additional ingredients. I think you're really going to enjoy them. And now we're going to make our sweet and sour onions. I made this the other day, and it really is a great complement to almost any dish, chicken, fish, or beef. We're going to start by taking a cup of hot boiling water, and I've got about a half a cup of raisins and we're going to take the hot water and put it on top of the raisins and leave them for about a half hour. That'll make them absorb the water and make them rehydrated. Once we finish, once that's done, then we'll work on the onion. Okay, we're going to start preparing the onions. Small pearl onion, I've cut off each end just slightly just to expose the onion and we're going to blanch them in boiling water for about two minutes. Blanching is the process of quickly, quickly cooking something in water uh, this is going to assist us in peeling off the skins, making it easier to get them off because they're kind of small. And we'll also soften them, shortening the cooking time a little bit later. Blanching is done to a lot of vegetables like string beans, beans, tomatoes, usually to help get the casing of the skin off or to soften it up. As soon as that's done, I'll let them cool, drain them, peel them, and then we'll put them into a fry pan. I'll show you the next step. So we've blanched, peeled, our onions and now we're going to add them to a saute pan with a tablespoon or so of butter <clears throat> and we're going to stir them to coat them with the butter. We're cooking this over a medium heat. My fry pan wasn't quite hot enough but it'll be fine. And then to this we're going to add some vinegar, water, sugar, salt and pepper. It's about a tablespoon of sugar about two tablespoons of uh, red wine vinegar, uh, two or three tablespoons of water, a quarter teaspoon of salt and pepper, and a tablespoon of sugar. And we'll add that to this, lower the heat, and let them simmer for about 35 to 45 minutes. And it'll come out really golden brown. The trick is you've got to stir them about every 10, 10 minutes or so. 
We've added in the salt, sugar, and pepper. And now I'm going to add in the water and the red vinegar. And that's going to be our sweet and sour. So up a little bit high. So we'll stir them and make sure you put a cover on. I might have forgotten to tell you that. But make sure you keep them covered and stir them every 10 minutes for about 30, 30 to 40 minutes. While the onions cook, we're going to prepare our potatoes. I had boiled them, quartered them, and boiled them in a pot of water for about 20-25 minutes or until they became tender. We're going to transfer them to a glass mixing bowl and we're going to whip them with the electric mixer before we add any ingredients. That will make your potatoes really tender, really soft and creamy. We're going to mix these up and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients and they'll be pretty much be done. Okay, so we mixed our potatoes, made them nice and creamy, and we're going to add a little bit of skim milk. dollops of sour cream. We'll add in a little bit of sour cream. That'll give them a great flavor. Some freshly ground salt and pepper. You can add anything you want to these potatoes. Cheese, garlic, parsley. Put it back on there. And that's it. The potatoes are done. We've got creamy mashed potatoes. Okay, now we're going to quickly make our sauce because we have about 10 minutes while the steak cooks. So I've added some chopped shallots to my fry pan that I had used for the steak. I just saute them for a few seconds. And then to this we're going to add a teaspoon, tablespoon of red wine vinegar. up a little too high. <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to add a, uh, about two teaspoons of low sodium soy sauce. And we're just going to stir that, breaking up any steak that got caught to the bottom of the pan. Mm, it smells great. We're going to cook that a minute. And then we're going to add our salt and pepper and some red wine. Okay, and we're going to add to this about one cup of beef broth. And one cup of red wine. And we're going to let this cook down until it reduces. Maybe about 10, roughly about 10 minutes. And if you want, you could add mushrooms to this, which would make a really great sauce. So that's it. Really quick, really easy. We'll cook it down. When the steak's ready, we'll pour it on top. In the entire steak in the oven, we have the uh, sauce reducing. And now we're going to quickly finish up our onions. Uh, they've been cooking for about a half hour. And to that, we're just going to add a couple of pine nuts and our raisins that we had soaked in water. And to heat the whole thing through, we'll just cook it. Sauteing it on a low heat. Mix everything together. Okay, our raisins. We added the raisins and the pine nuts to the onions, and it's really cooking. Uh, about maybe about seven seven to ten minutes on a low heat that'll cook the raisins and kind of toast the the pine nuts and here we have our plated dish looks delicious to me I'm ready to eat I'm starving <laughs>